Do you want to start? Uh, no, Dora, I'll start. <laughs> okay. 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 Hey guys. Hi. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Tola. And today we have a guest. Myself and one of my very good long term friends, Jasmine. We've decided to come to you guys and talk about things we wish our African parents taught us when we were growing up. Tell me what you want and I'll do it. Anything you want and I'll do it. But we won't, but I'll do it. Please hit that subscribe button now and we hope you enjoyed this video One thing I wish my mom spoke to me about or was confident talking to me about is <laughs> Sex I will tell a pastor about this is what you want to use your life for yeah. now I'm gonna do many do you know Sex. I do wish I do wish yeah. my mom sat me down oh, I just wish that you know she was confident enough to just say you know, to actually mention the word sex, like you know, because it's like a taboo, can't even leave her mouth. Like, just say sex, like it's sex. You know? I don't actually remember my mom talking about sex to me. That was something that was, I think she didn't want to talk about it, but she was okay talking about being a virgin. Like, using the word virgin is very okay, but using the word sex, taboo. Okay. <laughs> Another thing that I feel like our parents don't teach us. It's going off what Jasmine just mentioned about sex. It's periods. So I remember when I started my period and it was literally, yeah, um, mom, I'm bleeding. <laughs> I was so embarrassed. And I went up to her and I said, mom, I'm bleeding. And then she knew what it was. And it was at that point that this woman, she just that I think she just gave me a pad, that she, one of the pads that she had. Mm -hmm. And she said, okay, go and clean yourself. But we never had any conversation on where you get the pad from hygiene hygiene how to no. clean yourself how you're meant to do anything and you know we start young we start 11 10 12 mm -hmm. and you, you you're just left mm -hmm. like in this world like you're a woman now and it's worse when you don't have like sisters because luckily yeah. i have like two older sisters so you know it was just me it was just me mm -hmm. and my mother so i didn't know anything i feel like I don't, I don't even think I used Google as much that time, but thank God I had, I'd already done a bit of sex education in school, so mm. that helped a little bit. But it's just always nice hearing someone that you look up to, yeah. that you identify with, explain to you what's going on with your body and how to look after yourself because you're technically not more comfortable talking to your parents, but when they tell you, you tend to listen. Sounds childish, yeah, but I wish my mom spoke to me about boyfriends. Why I say that? Because my mom literally goes on like she just woke up one day, she just reached a certain mm. age, and I met my dad, and then they got mm. married and we had kids. Yeah, reality is yes. she actually had boyfriends. Yeah, it's true, you know. And they're always like, "Don't have boyfriends, yeah. don't have boyfriends," you know. Yeah. Do you know where it is? Yeah, I did have friends that their parents felt very comfortable talking about um they boyfriends yeah like i had a friend that her mom was very okay like her mom was talking to her about boyfriends about what to do what not to do and i felt like like i used to like going to the house just to hear their mom talk about it mm. because i never i never could tell my mom i even had a boyfriend or that i was seeing someone i never even knew my mom had a boyfriend i knew she got married she had like two children but i didn't actually know that she ever went she ever had boyfriends so i'm i'm talking in my big age of 20 24 25 and i feel like that's where we're starting to get to a point where she's actually mentioning boyfriends mm. and it's like wow like you, know, you, know, you used to go time. to the disco you used to you, you, you know? lived you lived life like mm. my mom has a tattoo here and she told me that that tattoo was an injury and I believed it until one day I was like, this injury looks like a butterfly. And she was just shut up there. And I was like, wow. My mom has a butterfly. And I always thought it was an injury for the longest time. Because I didn't know. Like these people, what these is? African parents, I don't understand them. Is it like they want I you to be perfect? That even their own mistakes, they can't speak to you about it. And that's another one. I actually mm. think African parents should be like should use themselves as examples sometimes because when you know that someone has been through certain situations they mm. can relate with it better rather than you saying oh that guy is not serious he doesn't like you you actually telling your child i remember when i was younger there was this one guy that was talking to me mm. he was showing me signs of this and it was very unserious it reminds me of this one that you're talking to it's a bit different it's a bit than like just telling you yeah because you don't you don't know that they've also been through it they've also been through trashy guys or good guys or yeah. bad guys you know you know that you can actually understand that they didn't just wake up one day and have a husband 
yeah. you know they're, sh they're sharing their life experiences maybe but that's their way of protecting us because uh, you know instead of them telling us like okay don't have this boyfriend because when i had a relationship with this guy their form of protection is just don't do yeah, it because they've yeah. experienced it and i think that's wrong as well so because how would you i mean let's all look at these youth nowadays before you can get a youth to identify with you you usually give them a story about you going through something similar to what they're going through to them. and they can relate to that when you do that you can relate better with your parents because when your parents don't give you that you just think you just see them as your parents mm -hmm. and you don't see them as friends and it's very important to have a friendship with your with your child because they'll go out there and they'll find other senior people that will offer them that motherly role and that friends role that they're looking for and it's normally not the best place because that person will teach them stuff that you don't want them to learn mm. that person will probably teach them the wrong part of sex that you don't want them to learn whereas if you had to, if you actually had that discussion with them it will be safer yeah. and it will be in a, a, a setting that you as a parent can control better mm. another thing that i feel like going back to sex that you mentioned a lot of children don't know how to use words like penis vagina and you call them tinky winky well, Toto's, Toto's pee, pee like no they're called vagina and penis and the thing is yeah if children are not comfortable using these words if mm. someone touches them on those parts they're probably going to find it very very awkward to talk about it because they can't use those words mm -hmm. because you've put like a big blasphemy on it if you make it a situation where they know their parts if somebody touches them you're telling them nobody should be touching your vagina nobody should be touching your penis a man has a penis a woman has a vagina there's nothing wrong with you telling them that i feel like these are all discussions we should have with children mm -hmm. and i really wish my mom had that discussion with me mm -hmm. it just in terms like this is your body part this is yours this is what it's yeah. called and nobody touches you not like obviously you learn to understand that that's what it is but at an early age i'm talking about from the age five six these children are smart enough to know they've identified <laughs> with their sexes so let them know because i feel like it's such a big thing it's, i mean to this big at my big age i'm still saying totos because because like, of the fear i mean that they've put inside you you don't use those words did you see my totos i'm sorry <laughs> and do you know what it is yeah I think also having that discussion with children from a young age could mm. also reduce the chances of sexual abuse because they know what it is that nobody else should be touching. Mm -hmm. And you've told them that if someone else touches you there, you scream, you shout, and you come and tell me. And that's a discussion that you should be having because in this day and age, you can't trust anyone. And everyone is so busy that we don't actually have time to be to monitor our child 24-7. Mm -hmm. And that's... That's just the way life is. So if we're going to work with the current life that we're all living, you need to make sure that you're safeguarding your child the best way you can, which is making sure that they're informed about these things because don't think they're ever too young to know things. Mm -hmm. You know, you telling them these things is more educative than you exposing them. It's not exposing them to something like, they have it, it's on their body. So what are you exposing them to? Do you know what I mean? It's, and it's the scientific word, like it's, yeah. it's the actual word. Yeah. It's I feel like it's so, like I get so heated with this conversation because it actually really annoys me. And it's me. so that at this day and age, I don't think I can just like say the word vagina near my yeah. mum. Vag, like I, I don't really think I can do <laughs> no, those. No, to my mum it's totos but to my children i'm definitely gonna say what it is yes yeah. definitely De definitely when i was growing up yeah i promise you on everything i hold dear to me my parents taught me if someone hits you you hit them back yes i was taught that <laughs> and i took that to school <laughs> yeah. Do you know what i can't lie to you i don't know i think i agree with my mom because my mom one day when i used to get bullied yeah i got bullied through a whole, the whole secondary school i got bullied Sorry. It's okay, it's okay, you know, okay, big yeah. girl now, big girl, fine I mean, girl, fine. fantastic, fine. you're fantastic, yeah. smelling in, <laughs> and that, but my mom, like, when I, when I tried, I think one time I tried to come and to cry to her about it, and she said, if they say something, you beat them, mm -hmm. you're from mm -hmm. Nigeria, mm -hmm. and you know where it is, yeah, I did get into fights, and I did beat them, and then they stopped, they stopped, well, they stopped saying it in my face. They were saying it behind my back and I still heard it. Mm. But they stopped saying it in front of me. 
But no, I feel like I feel I can't lie to you. I don't know. That feel, was that was because like, I because they taught me that I had that mentality. So if somebody yeah, was really. crossing me, like I'm not violent. <laughs> but if somebody was coming for me, <laughs> you're like, ready. I'm ready. You're ready. Then you're one ready. day somebody came. One 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 girl by the name of <laughs> Kate, I think <laughs> she came. Was it Georgina? I can't remember. One of them. She it's came really and I point. beat them. I beat her because she was trying to beat me. And I'm going goes, why did you go and fight? And I'm looking at her in the school office what, like, what but madame, yeah. what did you teach me? <laughs> I was taught from above. <laughs> Somebody beat me. But then again, when I came home told my dad, my dad was like, yes, yeah. well done. I'm not going to lie to you. you. Know? I can't lie to you. If you hit my child and that child doesn't hit you back, I'll probably hit that child when I get home. I can't even lie to you. Like, I feel like at a young age, yeah, animal instinct is going to come in. If you hit my child, I don't, don't like we can go to the, we can both go to the teacher after and complain about it. But that child, you better slap him back before you come home to me. There are, there's a saying in Yoruba, "Mi okinche omololi logbesiwa," which basically means I am not the child that will take message that you pass to me to go and tell my mom so that you will now tell me what I need to come back to you to say. Does that make sense? Like let's say I say to you, oh you're an idiot, and you now go running to your mom to say, oh, oh so this person called me an idiot, and your mom says, tell him that he's an idiot too. You two now come like an idiot. You don't come my mom person. said. My, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm saying I don't want my child to be that type of person. Mm. Give your reaction there. You want to slap me? I'll slap you too. Then I'll go to the teacher and tell the teacher that, Miss, this person slapped me, and I slapped him back. Okay, so yeah, if we're both gonna get detention fine but i've made it clear to that person you don't slap me ever again otherwise it's gonna be a punch next time and that's what i'm going to teach my child wow, okay fantastic. whether it's a fight or not i'm like my child needs to be ready like we're going to do classes boxing every what wow. don't even try listen that's me all. that's Tell me that 2.0 <laughs> that's me that's how, that's how i'm gonna raise my child to be so confident within themselves not arrogant but so confident that you can't try shit you can't try shit because they will. If, who are you? What my mother told me that I am the daughter of the most high. You're mad. Come on, we bring this shit over here. Look, right. confidence inflict. They're not ready. They're not. They're not ready. Don't, don't. I mean, they're it up right now. <laughs> the reality of finances when you go. Oh on. my gosh. Oh my gosh. Like, adulting is oh not my fun. Gosh. Yeah, oh my I, gosh. I, I wish. I wish. Do you know where it is, yeah? When I started growing up and I started learning about credit score, I mean, by the way, my credit score is amazing. It's oh, yeah? Sky high. I'm not just saying that to, to brag. Like, I've worked for it. That's how I got there. Okay. okay. But my point is, like, a lot of people, this, this doesn't apply to me, this case, thank God, but a lot of people don't know what finance is. A lot of people don't know anything about credit score. And it's because, let's be honest, when our parents came to this country, they were struggling, doing two jobs, three jobs to even make it, to even be thinking about, they weren't thinking about buying a house, so they weren't thinking about credit score. So, you know, this one, no blame on them, mm. but I do wish that they knew and they could have that conversation with a lot of us, because let's be honest, a lot of young children at that time was doing AC fraud and they were doing like, maybe not paying their phone bills. Mm. They were just taking out stuff on loan and not paying it back because they just were that's it you can get away with it mm -hmm. and then they ended up with debts and debts. and like um i think i don't know what it does to your credit score but is it if it, if it leaves like a black mark or whatever i don't know is what it being blacklisted blacklisted or... yes yeah, something and like that getting ccjs and all these yeah kind of all these things like things. a lot of people don't know these things mm -hmm. and then we don't get taught in school so this no. is what some parents mm -hmm. like western parents teach their children mm -hmm. so we can't blame too much of the african parents because a lot of them actually don't take loans enough for them to know about these things or they take loans and then and end they, up with ccj CCJs because they didn't know themselves anyway <laughs> Please, I'm not referring to my parents. I'm just yeah, saying we're just some saying, parents. No, there are loads of parents like that. So yeah. this is not targeting anybody. But we're but talking from our experience as black children mm -hmm. in the UK that have African parents. And we know that we've found a lot of our friends' parents in this situation. Even mm -hmm. our friends in situations where they didn't, they could have been told, but they didn't know. Yeah. Especially credit cards. I think yeah. that's a big, yes. a big yes. one. Like, if I had known, like, don't get, I'm not trying to say I'm in any financial mm -hmm. predicaments. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying I would have been more smarter mm -hmm. with um, the credit card applications. Because yeah. all of these applications affect your credit score, yes, you know? absolutely. But that's a whole topic for another. Yeah, I would actually like to talk about um, credit score and how I built mine, if you ever want to hear it. It's probably the same way everyone else has already built theirs. But I feel like everyone sharing their own personal experiences on it is always good because mm -hmm. someone else will be able to relate to mine slightly different.
again going back to that point with credit cards a lot of our african parents actually did a thing where they would take money from the bank and run away back home and never come back um so a lot of them actually didn't know <laughs> about credit cards a lot a lot of people did it a lot of african parents did that um a while uh, years ago they just they just took out a big loan and never came back um yeah i don't know how long that worked for but you know people did that um but then the thing is yeah people actually first of all you said that people don't know that the um the searches affect your credit score yes and it, and it takes big points out of it so people don't know that people don't also know that like how to use credit cards so I put, so like i grew up with being told by my mom to like credit cards is just a no-no and now i actually have two credit cards and i use them for my credit rate for my credit score yeah so i use it to pay all my regular bills because i know i already have money to pay it back so i have mm -hmm. like a um what do you call it what do you call that when money goes in automatically standing, standing yeah standing order so i have a standing order that goes in from my bank from my debit card account or current saving into my credit cards to clear them mm -hmm. and i do that just to make sure that there's money going through the credit card and being the credit card is actually being used mm -hmm. and when the bank sees that it, it, it helps your credit rating go up because it shows that you can take money and pay it back mm -hmm. and that's how a credit card should be used it should be help used to help you build your credit score and not no, use as money that you don't have and you're going a to liability yeah because that's yeah. when you, you get into trouble yes it's, it's not easy to get a credit card but you can get so many credit cards and there's so many loan sharks offering big big money but what they ask for in oh, return God. the aprs the apr is disgusting but you know 59.7 i i only will right. get credit cards that are zero interest because if you've got a good credit score it's very easy for you to get credit card credit cards that are zero interest and so my first two credit cards were zero interest and one was 18 months the other one was 24 months so that's me knowing that everything i'm spending on that card is actually tax free like i'm getting i'm paying back exactly what i'm taking mm. if that makes sense so i'm not actually paying any interest on that money so if i ever needed to buy anything in the future i know that okay i'm gonna have the money or i have the money but i don't want to spend my own money and i'd rather pay back in small chunks because i'm using my own money to get interest as well in the bank then i'd rather use a credit card because i know i have the money but i'd rather pay it monthly and not pay any interest and let my money keep paying interest in the bank account as it is so that's how i feel you should use your credit card you should be very smart with it and not use it in a way where it's going to be a liability like mm -hmm. you said that's one thing i definitely yeah i definitely definitely wish um we learned about how to use credit cards to our advantage so growing up um being a, of a darker skin mm. um i used to get called blick and ugly quite a lot those are two words that i was very very like used to hearing on a regular basis mm. and it was just that's just what it is um and i felt like i would so in certain day, certain days i would come home and i would tell my parent i would tell my mum that oh god bless her i love her like i'll tell, tell her that oh mom like am i ugly and she'd be like oh, yes you are jerry you know she was just joking don't get me wrong because she didn't actually know that i was being bullied to that point where i'm asking myself like am i ugly because you know i already see myself as ugly i'm being called ugly in school and then i'm coming home to ask my mom if i'm ugly and she's saying yes i'm ugly yes she was joking because she doesn't know the truth but the tr the truth of the matter is i feel like she just you know a child's emotion wasn't isn't really explored by african parents when like mm. when we were growing up i don't know about now because obviously we're not parents yet but i don't i hope that our friends that our parents are doing better and just making sure that they're actually looking towards noticing how the child is engaging with people mm -hmm. and the kind of questions they're asking because for me to ask that question i wasn't asking because um i wanted you to call me pretty but the reason i'm mentioning this is because a lot of parents feel like b building their child's confidence could um be damaging because it can make them cocky mm -hmm. and it can make them very arrogant whereas sometimes you need to boost a child's ego so that they can feel they can have a good or high self-esteem because that holds so much value mm. in life in terms of having confidence in terms of going for opportunities in terms of public speaking there's so many things that will, the opportunities that will come to you in that school college life that has a lot to do with your self-esteem and that could be built from home in mm. terms of what you tell your child um i was listening to this ted talk about and it wasn't even a ted talk but it was a guy it was a psychologist i was talking about children 
and in the first seven years of our life we just record everything that we hear so if a child done, does like a really bad drawing and you go oh that could be better the child holds on to it could be better it could be better they don't actually hold on to the fact that they've done something that wasn't good enough so what you're meant to instead do is tell them well done well done let's do it again and the fact that you're telling them to keep doing it again that repetitive spirit they will keep getting better rather than you telling them um that could be better or you can do better not like they can't do better you know it's crap <laughs> you know the drawing is crap but you don't tell them that because they're recording they're not really learning anything at that point mm -hmm. it's after the age of seven that they start to think a bit more consciously about what they're doing that you can then start to advance what you tell them but it's very very important what you tell a child at a young age a lot of the african parents didn't really think about that we just mm -hmm. Like, ah, you, you're ugly, you can't dance, you know. Oh, you know, you just laugh at children, but they hold on to I these things. It's just that, like, African parents growing up, they're quite emotionless. Yes, yeah, uh, like, yes. You can't yes. even hug them. Yes, oh my gosh. Like, I remember the first time I said I love you to my mom. Like I had to say it a few times for her to start getting to the point where she now say we now say I love you, love you too. But that was a big move for her, you know. I don't even think I've ever like. You have to, you have to initiate it because I, I, I have that. To do it. Start initiating it from now. You see, at first it'll be a bit weird mm. for you and for her, but after a while it'll be normal. Like she's walking out the door, love you, love you. Like it's normal now, but the yeah. first instant it was so hard. Even mm. hugs, like my mom to this day, my mom hugs me like this. <laughs> I'm not even lying to you. It's just like. <laughs> I, I, I don't understand. I remember when I first came from Nigeria, my mom was here already and I came here to meet her and I was crying because I, I think I was 11 years old. I hadn't seen her in a year and I saw her so I literally like, I was just crying because I didn't know what to do and bearing in mind the emotion there so I don't know, I didn't think to hug or whatever because we don't do those things so I wasn't raised on hugs or whatever. Um, so I was just crying and then she goes to me, what's wrong with you? <laughs> And I just stopped crying because I, I was like, I'm like, joking, you're I'm in joking. London I'm and you're crying. I, I just did not express it to myself that, to, to her that I missed you. Like, I fucking love you. I missed you. And we couldn't even have that conversation. Because we had like, to keep that in silence. Like, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Like, why are you crying? There's something was... fell in my eye on the plane. <laughs> that was... just. I was out. I don't. I can't. I can't lie to you. I feel like it's so important for you to talk and to let children express themselves. Like as I've gone older and you know, I'm building a better relationship with my dad. Yeah. Like he can jokingly say, "Oh, I love you." Yeah. But it's a joke. Oh, but it's, even it's when he's still saying it, do you get what I mean? Like if he's annoying me, if he's doing something that he knows the moment. Yeah. Oh, but you're my girl. I love oh. you. <laughs> but. I should just have a serious conversation. Yeah. I love you, Jazz. Yeah. That no, no, they're mm. not there yet. Mm -mm. They've got um, a lot of work to do on you that. You know what? Planet. Just so that it doesn't look like we're bashing African parents, we do we love we love our we African our whole parents chest. because they've come and they've sacrificed so much for us. No. They've put their they've put their needs behind. Even they've sometimes left everything happiness. back home and their happiness. Mm -hmm. They've left everything just to give us a better life oh. and that's the only way we're now here talking about feelings and these are all first world problems you know? let's be yeah. honest like, but my emotions my, and my, my emotions feelings. Like, we've come yeah. from a lot and we love absolutely yeah we're, we're gonna put the sweet mother track in here sweet mother i never forget you for this summer where you suffer for me sometimes sweet dad is sweet sweet father <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. We hope this video doesn't offend anyone. It is just to highlight some of the things that us growing up we wish our parents had taught us. But you know, thank God for Google, thank God for older sisters to thank god for other people around friends. you friends all the friends That's that we have that's taught us all these things mm -hmm. so you know we still love you guys we still i mean mom mom i love you i love you <laughs> you know <laughs>
I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna make sure my mom watches this as well. Actually, I love you, mom. I love you, and I wouldn't change anything about you. And I love like you just the you way know, you are, mom. Sometimes, yeah. Let me bring that. <laughs> you can be difficult, okay. but but chick, chick sees me. You know you my right on that. Me das, no, is it, is it, yeah, yeah. Same thank you now. Yeah, yeah. And she, I took me. Me das, me das, and um, how do you say I love you? Middle, middle, middle pa. Wow. And money fair. Money fair. <laughs> money fair. Um, thank you so much for watching, guys. We hope you enjoyed this video. Yeah. Once again, this is Jazz, aka King Jazz, and this is Sola Ade King. Okay. So thank you so much for watching, and we well, I will see you in my next video. Bye. Love you. <laughs> oh, we did that at the same time. I do know I'm gonna do that. Tell me what you want and I'll do it. Anything you want and I'll do it. Bobby won't up, but I'll do it. Fill that belly up, but I'll do it. Dress a little sweet, but I'll do it. I can pay on that, but I'll do it.